Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you how I create slash notation in my drum charts when I'm creating drum charts. So the very first one I'm going to show you is how to get four slashes or five slashes, whatever, depending on your time signature to get slashes in a measure. So make sure you're using your selection tool. You select the measure, you right click and you go down to staff style. And then in this menu, you have a couple different options. You want apply staff style because this is actually a default style. And the very first one that comes up is slash notation. You click on that and you get four slashes in the measure. Now it will do that whether you have a rest or if you have music. So say you've written this music, you want to replace it with slashes. You again, you go to staff style, apply the staff style and create slashes. Real simple. Now let's say you want to create what they call section cues. Section cues are rhythms above the measure while you still have slashes below. So to do that, we have to do a few things. First up, I prefer to do all my rhythmic slash notation in layer four. I find that it helps me keep the different layers of notation organized. I'm using a drum set here. Of course, I'm playing drum set. And drum set's really handy because it has, as you'll notice up here at the very top in the first ledger line, rhythm cues. Okay, so I will move my cursor to that measure and I will create a rhythm cue. So let's do this. Um, and it's just like uh, putting in any other music notation. And now I actually use a MIDI keyboard and uh, I have rhythm cues assigned to one of the keys. So it makes it a little bit easier to do this entry. But for now, I'll just mouse click it in there. So I have created the rhythm cues. I'll press the L key because I want those stems to be facing up. I think it looks neater. And then I will highlight my quarter note rests. I'll press the up key on my keyboard and just get the rest up uh, off the staff as well. So now that I've done that, I do want to create these slashes. Now what happens is if you right click here, you go to staff style, apply staff, and you do slash notation, it'll overwrite that with the slashes. And we don't want that, we want to see both. So what we need to do is actually define a new custom staff style. So right here, the first option is define a staff style. Click on that, it brings up this dialogue, and we're going to create a new one. Um, now I'm gonna call it pretty close to the same thing, 01 slash notation uh, with, uh, what were these called again? Section with section cues. Okay. Now I named it similarly so that they're just next to each other in the list once it's saved. Now here's the big difference. We need to go down to the alternate notation uh, menu here and there's a settings button. We click on that. Now this is where we define how we want the notation to work. We want slash notation, click that there, and we want it to appear on layer one. Okay, so we want slash notation on layer one, and we can say, you know, include articulations, etc. Now here we have the options for other layers. We want to check all of these. Show the notes, show the articulations, lyrics, smart shapes, and expressions. Show everything from other layers. And if you remember, I put that uh, rhythm cue on layer four. Right, so now when I select a staff style, go to apply and pick the one that says slash notation with section cues, what it will do is actually put slashes on layer one and it will keep the rhythm cues that I wrote in layer four above. So that's how you're able to get a combined measure. Now let's say you've done something like this. You've written a drum beat, but here on beat four, you want a slash for a drum fill. In this case, again, using your selection tool, you just actually draw a little box around the notes you want to replace. It will highlight them. You right click in the highlight, you go to staff style, you apply staff style. And in this case, you'll pick slash notation, the regular one. Because when you do that, it hides the other layers. So in this case, we had to click the settings to show the other layers. Here they are hidden automatically. And that's how you get a beat for slash for like a drum fill. And if you want, you could go up here, add a little text box, write the word fill, and there you go. Now you have a drum fill. Now the next type of slash notation is called uh, ensemble figures. And those are figures you know, where the whole band is playing. So basically in this measure here, we have an ensemble figure and this is actually pretty standard. You may just see it written this way, but on a drum set, you could be confused. It does also look like you're just playing a snare drum rhythm. And let's say you really want to kind of, you're kicking a big band. You really wanted to, uh, to 
we want to play more than just snare drum hits, right? So in this case, we select on this measure, we right click, and we go to the staff style. Now we want to define another staff style. So we go here to define staff styles, uh, define staff styles. Say that a million times like I am in this video. And you go to rhythmic notation. Now if you were to do regular rhythmic notation, it would actually put it on layer one. But since we've put uh, our rhythms and we want to do all our rhythms in layer four, we need to go to this alternate notation, click the settings, and real simply from rhythmic notation being selected here, we go down to apply it to layer four. And again, that's just me. I like to have all my slashes done on layer four. So apply this to layer four. You could also show other notes and articulations, um, although that could be pretty messy, but you might have a reason to do that. So that's how you would do it here by selecting your other layers uh, options. So you hit okay, you hit okay. Now remember, this is the thing that I always got caught up on. I would define it and then I'd say it didn't work. You have to go back and you have to go through the steps of applying the style. So staff style, apply style, go to rhythmic notation, you click on that and there we go. Now it's changed into a slash notation. And if you want, you could also do it with the stems up. Um, I think I like it with stems down. Now the final option here is can I do rhythmic notation with slashes in the same measures? And yes, you can. It's really simple. You do it the same way by highlighting what you want changed. So here we go. I'm going to highlight the 16th notes here, go to staff style, apply the style. We're going with rhythmic notation. You'll notice it put, it kept the uh, staccato. Um, I probably would like it there, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. There's probably some rule about that. And then same thing over here. I want this to be an ensemble figure. I highlight staff style, go to apply, do rhythmic notation. And there we go. Now we've got slashes. Again, I probably want to see these above the notes. I'm thinking, I don't know. I could be wrong. Now in here, let's say I want to do a drum fill or like a little mini solo break. So I'll do the same thing. I'll highlight these three beats. Let's do like a beat of silence. I think that's neat. So three beats, staff style. We want to apply a style. And in this case, we'll just do slash notation. And there we go. Now we have the slashes combined with our ensemble figure. Again, if you want, you can drop a little text up top. Let's say this is a drum fill. And if you want it to continue for all three beats, what I like to do to make that clear is I'll use the shape tool right here, a little double dotted line. Now these are kind of weird. You double click and then drag. All right, so there's my line. And then I'll just, you know, kind of maybe just put it here to make it look a little prettier, make it obvious that you're filling over those three beats. So that is it. That's everything. Those are the different types of notation that I use when I'm writing drum charts. And uh, I know this information is kind of hard to find sometimes. So uh, here it is. Hopefully it's nice and clear. Hopefully it helps you out. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.